Hi, this is uh, Karthik from Meridgan again. So this is uh, a you know, continuation of the uh, previous uh, video wherein we saw how to write a simple kernel loadable module. So what we are going to discuss in this video is, um, you know, like, um, so we'll just see on a little bit more on uh, what is the uh, two functions that we wrote, uh, the module init and the module exit, and, um, you know, whether they are really required for a module and uh, what happens if you omit one of them, like, so what I'm going to do is, uh, so this is a program that we wrote uh, last time during the last video sessions. And uh, so I'm going to copy this file and, you know, create two separate files. So I'll just copy example01 simple module.c as example02 simple module init.c and, you know, copy example01 underscore simple module.c as example03 simple module exit.c okay so I'm just going to open this example 02 module init.c and what we will do in this file is we will remove the module exit function so in summary we have only so we have a loadable kernel module so which has only a module init function in it and there is no module exit function in it and just for um, for uh, you know loading purpose I'm just going to rename this um, 0, 01 as 0, 02. There's only to keep the function names in sync with the file name. Like, So I'm also going to open the example 03 file and uh, do a similar replacement of 0, 01 as 0, 03. And we are going to remove the module init in this file. Okay. So in summary, we have two files now. So I'm just going to open both of them in this in this editor. So what you see here is, um, you know, the example two simple module in it, which is shown in the top half of the screen, has only a module init function in it, and um, we have another module which is in the bottom half of the screen. Let's say example zero three, module exit, which has only a module exit in it. Like. Now let's see what happens when you have when you load these modules <coughs> into the kernel space. So we're going to modify the make file to help us build these two modules. So we have obj and so I'm, I'm going to put another syntax now. So I'm just going to say obj and plus equal to example zero two simple module init dot o and obj and m plus equal to example zero three simple module exit dot o. Now in in comparison to the colon equal to syntax, so the colon equal to basically means you want to initialize the obj and m variable to a string that's provided on the right hand side. Now when you do a plus equal to, so it basically means so that you, in addition to whatever is already present in the obj and list of files to be compiled, you also want to add these additional files. So in summary what's going to happen now is the obj and m is initially initialized with example 0 one simple module. In addition to that, we also added 0, 02 simple module in it and 0, 03 simple module exit. Now, when you execute the make command, so we will see three modules being built. That's example 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03. Let's do that. So, I'm just going to run this uh, make command again. So, I'm just going to recall the make command. So, we'll just clean the list once and then. We do a make minus c the kernel build directory, and um, we have the uh, the m is equal to the present working directory, and we build the modules. Now, like you see here, now we have uh, three modules that are currently built. So that's example zero one simple module, then example zero two module simple module in it, and then example zero three simple module exit. Okay. Now let's start with uh, the example three modules. Before that, let me confirm we don't have any other modules loaded into the kernel space. I mean, our own example modules. So I'm going to do a tail minus f of sudo tail minus f of var log syslog. And let's open another terminal here. I'm just going to keep it in the bottom right hand side and I will do sudo in smod example 03 module exit dot ko. Now what you see is uh, 
Now we don't see any module init related um, prints that are coming in. Uh, we only see this, uh, you know, this one text here which says example 303 uh, does not have a module license specified and it hence it taints the kernel. Like, so we'll come to this discussion a little later. So what I want you to understand now is since we don't have the module init function provided in this module, that's the example 03.c file. So what it effectively means is, so when this module gets loaded into the kernel space, so the insmod program is going to load this module into the kernel space, make the necessary linking into the kernel space, and then since you have not specified a module init function, it is not going to call any functions in your module to initialize. So in summary, so if you don't have anything to initialize in your module, you can take this approach. Okay. Now let's try removing this module, so RM mod example 03 KO. Now like you see here, you see this, you know, this this line here which indicates the module exit function is called. So we have provided a module which is not having an init, so the kernel does not, the insmod utility does not have anything to do with your initialization, module initialization. And since you have provided a module exit function, when you eventually unload the module, the module exit gets called. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the pseudo insmod of example 02 module. Okay. Now you see here, so we since we provided only the init function in the module example 02, so we see that when this module was loaded, I mean we have this module init being called, so which is expected because we have provided a module init function. But the point to be noted here is we don't have a module exit function provided I mean in, in the module, in this example 02 module. Now what that means is, so if you just do a, let me just maximize the screen, and if I do an ls mod and look for the example 2 module, you would notice that it's loaded here, and when you do a sudo of rm mod example 02 in it, it says the uh, device is busy and cannot be removed. That's because you have, since you have not provided a module exit function, so you have kind of indicated the kernel or the RM mod utility that this module is permanently loaded into the kernel space. So let's quickly, you know, summarize what we discussed. So we wrote two programs. One is the example 02 module and the other one was an example 03 module. Okay, so the example 02 module had a module in it only. So in summary, so when this module gets loaded into the kernel space, the module gets initialized by invoking the, the module in it function that is provided in the module. But since there is no exit function provided, this module permanently gets loaded into the kernel space. So the only way to remove this module is to reboot the kernel. And on similar lines, we have this example 03 module that we wrote. And since we have not provided a module init function, when the module gets loaded into the kernel space, the insmod program has no function to call for initializing this module. Hence, it simply loads the module into the kernel space and doesn't invoke any functions in the module for initializing it. However, when you do an RM mod, that's basically remove the module from the kernel space, the module exit function gets called. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here and uh, we'll discuss about more about modules in the next videos. Thank you.